Hello, everybody. Welcome to Primavera Pro 2023. Um, my name is Ruth. I'm from an organization called In Place of War. Uh, we're based in Manchester, but we work with music in places of conflict all over the world, helping to make positive social change in communities facing conflict. Um, I'm really, really honored and excited to be moderating this panel today with some incredible people. Um, this panel is called, What Does Liberation Sound Like? Looking at the social and political elements of partying. It says, what happens when modern culture faces oppressive regimes, social crises, and economic despair? It is vital to provide a safe space for music lovers to let off steam, reconnect, and create community. From Georgia to Palestine, music becomes a catalyst of emotions for parties that have begun become a tool for artistic protest and preservation of cultural heritage. This conversation will explore the implications and benefits of organizing resistance parties, where protest culture carries the beat while voices are raised on the dance floor, creating the soundtrack for liberation. So this panel is really up my street because I love partying and I also love making change in the world. And I'm joined by some remarkable people, some who I knew already and some who I've met recently, um, who all are incredibly inspiring and I think on the front line of making radical change in the world through dance. So um, I just want to ask each of the panelists to briefly introduce themselves, um, starting with my friend Mahmoud. Yeah. Hi everyone, I'm Mahmoud from Lid, Palestine, a musician, co-founder of DAM. DAM is a hip-hop band started back in 99, and I'm also the co-founder of Palestine Music Expo, which is a showcase for Palestinian music uh, and the Palestinian music scene. Thank you so much. Wizzy. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Wizzy. I am a Syrian, half Syrian, half Lebanese singer, songwriter, event producer. I'm based in Berlin since 2015. And I am a producer and co-founder of shows such as uh, Queens Against Borders, Dandana, and Queer Syria in Berlin. Amazing. Thank you so much, Wizzy. Hi, everyone. Nadja Urashvili from Tbilisi, Georgia. Artist, activist, and co-founder of uh, Basiani Techno Club in Tbilisi. Thank you. Hello. Uh, I'm Georgi from uh, Tbilisi, Georgia, representing Basiani and also the Queer Nights, uh, co one of the co-founders of Queer Nights series at Bastiani and uh, uh, co-founder of uh, Creative Collective Spectrum for Social Change and Cultural Transformation. Amazing. What an amazing group of people. Um, I, when I was thinking about this session, I was reminded of a film that I watched uh, a, a couple of years ago uh, by Laurent Garnier, a film about his career. And there was a moment in the film, I, I remember watching it in the pandemic, where we'd not been able to party for a long time. And I remember watching it and he said, the dance floor is a political space. And I thought that's so interesting because I thought the dance floor creates community. It brings people together. And through those, those communities, we can together make a change. We have this connection through music and music is the magnet, music is the connector, music is the facilitator of the change. And I love that about music. I've never just been into music to just have a great time. I know that it can do so much more. So that's why I was so excited to, to be able to moderate this session today. And I just really wanted to kind of dive in with, with each of the, the panelists and find out more about the work that they're doing. And I think maybe starting with Georgie and Nadja, um, just really, first of all, understanding the context that you guys grew up in. Okay, I will speak in my native uh, language and George will translate. So, um, um, uh, our experience is quite hard because we are the country who was defeated in four wars in the last 30 years alone. And in the last 30 years, we have uh, uh, encountered the total destruction of the country, poverty, economical collapse, the heroin era, and uh, total 
Izolacija, sabčita izolacija, sada se ovo perida saluri ko akzaluri, muzikatski akzaluri ko... Uh, and we, uh, we have uh, passed the Soviet isolation era when uh, Georgia was part of the Soviet Union, and at the time everything which ca came from the West was prohibited, including the music. Um, <coughs> Da, principši, aj am utana s robi su samar slobi sa jam si sa stike smiju hedava, tada su sa radagu i kargaus, ime didar cmenarom, a goši ne bine hir se uli, da solidar uli, sa zgadu eba da se hancu. The, then we encountered the revolutions and one more war, and, uh, but besides this we never lost our hopes that we could uh, pre build the uh, um, country and the society based on solidarity and uh, just system. How is our training context? It was a very difficult time to get out of the country. The alternative was to get out of the country. The principle was that 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 uh, this is the context, but even during the 90s, we had a very strong alternative music scene. And when the tanks were in the city, and uh, at the same time, people were creating music in the city. So that's why we are uh, here, where we are, um, where, uh, we are now. Amazing. It's amazing <laughs> that music is always there, even in, um, when times are very hard, when there are tanks on the streets. But that leads me then to the question, I guess, why? Is in, in really challenging times, why is, is music, why do you think music matters in those times? I think it's quite paradoxical that uh, even during the 90s of Georgia, when there was literally no, no electricity in the country because like everything was destroyed, people were creating uh, the electronic music at the time. And uh, um, at the time and afterwards as well, and right now, and I think always the Music is really what uh, connects people, what, uh, mm, what uh, widens people's imagination and uh, kind of draws the world, not as it is, but as it could be in the best way possible. So people, uh, I think that that's why uh, people always love to get together to listen to music and to um, uh, have this sense of belonging uh, and this sense of unity and uh, to belong in something whole and big uh, together. And in terms of what did it look like? So what, in terms of where you could go to party, what kind of clubs? I mean, we know Bassiani, right? W was there just this one place or were there more places that people could go? And what did that look like? Maybe you. Um, well, <clears throat> Of course, the, uh, the clubs and the electronic music has always been very popular in Tbilisi, even uh, during the 90s, but uh, uh, what made Bastiani a special place is that it was intentionally created to be a political and cultural space uh, to unite all the people who were outcasted from the general uh, dominant uh, and oppressive culture. Uh, so all the people who were outcasted uh, from this uh, dominant culture uh, uh, we are sta started to uh, unite at Bassiani, and, uh, mm, and the dance floor of Bassiani became the gathering space of people who had different minds, different visions of the pa past, present, and future. And uh, uh, also what made Bassiani so special is that it's, it's, it's a club which uh, has its own declared values. Uh, which is the solidarity, equality, uh, liberty, and uh, taking care of each other. And so what, uh, what started on the dance floor of Bassiani is what a totally new waves of interaction between the people than uh, we saw it on the outside uh, uh, society. Me davam te persram čem tuš mesaris kan se kutre bit konflikt u regionši romanski sakratolo im kupe parut sam titkmi sam tal sam ezobu sertma intonomija kus. Especially in the times when in the whole neighboring countries there is a war with each other. Im konflikt u regionši kan se kutre bit zvirpas ja sad se kwa moj ne bi radkanan se sarisadgili sadat trebis dame kupe bakhte bada sad. 
And uh, in, uh, uh, during these times, uh, the dance floor uh, becomes even more important because it becomes a place where all the people from different countries who have uh, wars with each other uh, and conflicts with each other come to one place to uh, dance together. And I will also add one, add one thing that uh, mm, the door policy generally of Bastian was always uh, about inclusiveness. So if you go to like around many clubs like worldwide, you see that like no homophobes allowed, no racists allowed, no this allowed, no this allowed, and the list is quite long. But in case of Bastian, the door policy was, was that, and the aim was that uh, that we should unite all the people from different groups of the society, even like the probably, I mean, the gay people and the homophobes, uh, uh, just because it should become the meeting point, so that people have fun together, they dance together, they listen to mu music together, and with this, they become friends. That's it, creating a dialogue where I guess people would normally be exactly. in separate places. Exactly. And through Bassiani and the dance floor, do you see that then manifest? Do, does that happen? Do, 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 does that, is that taken further in the outside of the club? So do things happen? Are the, you know, are the changes that you can see that have happened and are directly connected to that dance floor? Principship Bassiani, what is it? Chong Guina has heard from the chefs from the Menebis. We have seen the uh, people who changed their mind and transformed their mind in just one night at the clubs. And uh, what people practice in the club then goes outside in the society. And we have a very good sense of what was happening in Georgia and in Georgian society 10 years ago and what's happening now. So the change is quite visible. It's amazing. And I guess a, a club like, like you've described sounds very radical. It sounds amazing. But I guess some people may see it as something different, as a threat or the authorities and so on. Have you faced resistance? Has the club faced resistance? Basiani, Piro Elvetrida Nikots in Arm de Gobreve, Kobe, Mrs. Sahelitzaris, Soli Saheli, Chesabamisat, Mas Teliam, Tratzlis Gamalobashi, Aditzlis Rebamale, Arconia, some Swedi Tsoreba. Basiani is a club for the resistant people. And uh, the name of it is the name of the battle for freedom. And uh, during the last 10 years, and the club is becoming 10 years old quite soon, uh, we have never had a peaceful night. Um, so it's a place where the uh, countless social movements in Georgia were born, and people uh, who, who were going to Bassiani, uh, they uh, became friends, they shared their vision, their values, they created, created the communities, and uh, now uh, all the people who are in the vanguard of the social movements in Georgia, they are the people who hit who dance in the club on every Friday and Saturday. So for the system and for the government, it's of course a headache. No, uh, because the, the the, what's happening in the clubs is uh, challenging the status quo of the uh, of the system, and what happened at Bastiani five years ago when the police raided right, the club with, with the armed forces was well, the clear sign that they, the the system was frightened by themselves, and you will see this story in the movie of the dancer die, which will be shown afterwards. Amazing. That's, it just sounds like the most incredible, incredible club and the most incredible movement. And um, there is going to be a film at the end of this 
um, sort of showing what the club's about. Um, thank you both. Amazing. Really, really thank inspiring. Yeah. I'm going to move on to Wizzy. Um, Wizzy, again, can you tell me a bit about your context, uh, how you, where you grew up and, and where you are now? Uh, I grew up in Syria, and uh, I came to Berlin when I was uh, 17 years old. Uh, my journey in music started back in Syria, where I was 13 years old, and I started to write songs. And I didn't have the idea of producing show because uh, producing shows before because I didn't have the ability to do that, to do that or the vision. Um, growing up in Syria in general was very hard for being a person from the LGBTQ community. And uh, as an artist, it was even harder because every song that I used to wrote and I tried to, to introduce myself to producer to, to produce the song, my sound felt that it doesn't fit in or it wasn't the, the masculine sound that they want me to sound like, especially for dance music, the music that I love to write, uh, because Arabic dance music, before in the days, it used to, to have this melody of uh, like very masculine sound. We have this genre, Dabke and Mawal, and everybody was telling me, no, you need to change the way that you sing, you need to change the way that you write your music, and that's why I, I got to take advantage of what they wanted me to do before, and I stuck to the, what they want, and I was doing it the whole time until the day that I came to, to Germany. And the journey that I had, the road from Syria to, to Germany, which really not just changed me as a person, changed me as an artist as well, and the way that I write my music, and I really know that it doesn't worth it to, to hide myself anymore or my vision and my thoughts. And I just put it all out and I started to produce shows in 2016 and write music and produce my own music. Sounds amazing. And I guess in terms of a sort of an audience for your music, maybe that wasn't so present in Syria. It wasn't. How, being in Berlin, how has that opened up? A world of opportunities, I guess, to you. What does that What does that look like now? Berlin is really the the city of opportunities. People in Berlin are really multicultural, and <coughs> they're open always to to uh, explore new cultures. And I do believe that uh, music is the best way to introduce culture to people, especially Middle Eastern culture, because it was for so long and still very mis mistakenly understood. So introducing my music and the other performers that I bring to the shows, how they introduce their cultures and they're having the space to really be who they are. It's really great, like the show Queens Against Borders that we produce. We always say that we aim in that show to break borders and build bridges, bridges between cultures and introduce the culture in the best possible way. Sounds really amazing. And so tell me more about the Queens Against Borders, what does the show look like? Is it electronic music, Is it, or is it a mixture of things? It's a show. Is it a mixture of people? It's a mixture of people. It's a showcase uh, that we start, it's performing uh, party, and we bring after that techno DJs, even DJs that uh, play uh, music from all around the world. It's not just about Western music, we play Arabic music, Turkish music. And uh, as we started that show in 2016, we started it in a very small bars, underground bars. And it grew up with time. And we opened the Pride Ceremony last year in Berlin, and we're opening it this year. People really felt related and the audience to that show because everybody was making a statement during their performance. And the main reason why we did that show was to f actually fund uh, surgeries for trans people. And we were able to fund three uh, trans people surgeries. And they're as well performers and were performing with us and still with us. And now Queens Against Borders is more like an organization and a shelter where really trans and queer people find shelter and, and yeah, safety. That's amazing. That's really, really amazing. And I guess sort of my final question before we move on to Mahmoud is, 
if there is one change that you can make with what you do, what does that, what would that vision be? What's the, if you could think big and, and have one, one big change? I really would like to, to maybe break the, the thin line, to cut the thin line between, uh, especially in art, between discrimination and diversity. Because they are very similar in opportunities wise. Because in diversity, we recognize our differences, yes, but we appreciate and we celebrate those differences. But in discrimination, we start also to recognize these differences, but we give opportunities to those artists based on those differences. So everybody needs to have equal opportunities, especially in music, not just because they have a sexy story for the media or for club. Amazing, inspiring. Thank you so much, Wizzy. Um, I'm now going to move on to Mahmoud, who I've known for a while. Um, I've had the, the, the look and, and um, privilege to be able to go to Palestine Music Expo three times, I think. Um, and I absolutely love it. Um, but first of all, I guess, just, just looking, thinking about context, can you tell me a bit about where you're from? Yeah, I'm from a very famous place, not for the good reasons. Um, I'm from Palestine. I was born and raised in Lid. Uh, myself, I'm a musician. I started uh, my band, Dam, in 99 with uh, Tamer and Sohel. It's the first Arabic hip hop group. Um, later on, moved on to entrepreneurship. Started my first startup in 2014, also around music, was named Indie Push. Um, and then I started Palestine Music Expo in 2017. Um, as everyone, I, do, I think everyone knows that Palestine is under occupation, so the music is also affected by, by that occupation. So the, in the music, you hear uh, us talking about politics, but also about social issues uh, and personal issues. So if we think about when you started Palestine Music Expo, we're all here in Primavera Sound, which is a, a music industry event. What was the rationale of starting Palestine Music Expo? Well, in the beginning, it was myself as, as a member of DAM. I had the opportunity to go outside of Palestine and tour around the world. Uh, I'm a Palestinian who are, who's living inside of Israel, which we are considered as Palestinian, or they call us as Palestinians of the 48. Uh, so in a way, there is Palestinians of the 48, and there is Palestinians of the 67. Uh, and it referred to the war that happened in 48, and then the 67, it referred to the war that happened in 67. So you have the West Bank and Gaza, and you have the Palestinians who live inside of 48, and also you have the refugees. And being, you know, in a way privileged, because I have Israeli passport and I can tour the, the world and I can go outside of my city, uh, since young age, I had the opportunity to go and tour and to see people and to know cultures and to go to festivals. Um, and coming back to, to my hometown and coming back to Palestine, and there is no industry, there is no nothing. Artists don't have opportunity to go out. Uh, some of the artists who live in the West Bank are not even allowed to go out from the West Bank or not allowed to go out from Gaza because they are under occupation. So the idea was how we can bring the industry to Palestine and make you know, the distance uh, shorter. And this is, was you know, the spark of, uh, of PMX, is how we can do it. And we, we started this with you know, collaborating with uh, Martin from Cooking Vinyl and also Abed, my friend uh, from Akka. Amazing. And, and so bringing the music industry to a context of a place that's under occupation is maybe a slightly different kind of experience than yeah. maybe coming to Primavera Sound, Primavera Pro. It is. What, what does that look like when people, when people go to the event? Well, it depends who's the people. Are we talking about the delegates? Sorry, the delegates. Uh, no, the, yeah, the, the international delegates. Yeah. I think they are like in, in shock. Um, which is a, a good shock because what we do in Palestine Music Expo is that we invite the delegate and then during the day we take them to see 
different cities in Palestine, and during the night, they come and see performances. So they go to different cities in Palestine, they see the occupation, they see the separation wall, the soldiers. It's very brutal, it's very black and white. And then at night, there is, you know, very good shows, very good stage, uh, like international level stage. And, you know, they don't, sometimes they don't understand, but what we did during the day and what they are doing during the night, there is like, you know, uh, contracts here. Um, but I think, you know, I, I think part of it is, you know, introducing them to, the, to, the, to Palestine as, as to humanize the Palestinians as, uh, you know, people, as culture, because a lot of them really know about Palestine from the news. A lot of them are not aware of, you know, that we are even, you know, people who have culture, who have music, who, yes, we have occupation, but we can party at night. I think that's that's what yeah. I have got from 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 going to Palestine Music Expo is that the music is the, the reason to go right to to go and and to see this amazing music and I think without the music it's very it's quite hard to go to Palestine without that in the night the dynamism the celebration the brilliance the quality and in the daytime to go and to witness firsthand what's happening there I think it is a shock for the delegates to go the first time but at the same time through the music, there is this feeling of hope. There is this feeling of, of, of positivity. So it's, there is a, there's this kind of balance. Um, but for me, the other thing is the quality of the music, the level, the, the stage, the production. It's mind-blowing. It's absolutely amazing. And can you maybe tell me about some of the things that have happened as a result of, of having the event for the artists that perform? Yeah, well... Part of it like, was you know, that people came and I think, I, I'm not sure about you know, me saying that, but I think the delegates came to Palestine thinking you know, it's more like uh, uh, doing something for people who are living under occupation and then they discover good music. They discover great music that they can do business with. And as a result of PMX, a lot of artists signed to record labels a lot of them uh, was able, actually, there was a rap group from a refugee camp that never went out from their refugee camps. And somehow we were able, you know, to book them for shows outside of Palestine. And that was their first time traveling outside of, uh, of Palestine. Uh, there was a lot of artists who signed with distribution companies. And also, uh, uh, one of our achievements is that we led to uh, uh, for the city of Ramallah to be recognized as a music city by, by UNESCO. Uh, so there is a lot you know, of, uh, of achievements, but I think the big achievement that we, we had as Palestine Music Expo, as Palestinians, is that we were able to connect uh, Palestinians themselves with each other, to bring them to one place. Um, because other, other than that, we are very separated by walls and by borders, and we don't meet usual, usually. Um, so Palestine Music Expo bringing all these Palestinians from different places to one place. And I think, because I've been a participant in this event, one of the things that I've noticed that I feel is really powerful and quite unique to PMX is we have a WhatsApp group with all the people who've been before and it's probably one of the most active music industry groups, people sharing when there's a need for people to be active, um, people sharing, oh, there's a band from Palestine playing in London today, and everyone will go and see them. So it feels like a real sense of community, people always wanting to return and to support as they yeah. can. Do you get a sense of that as well? Yeah, I do, and it's not, you know, it's... Uh I mean, it's crazy when you tell delegates to come to Palestine and they say, yes, I'm coming. <laughs> you know, you know they, they, they don't have to. And to come to a place, place of war, for example. And we're not just talking, you know, we're yeah. talking about people like Brian Eno, yeah. the biggest, you know, the biggest names in music in the world. You know, I think, I think this is maybe right. So the first year there was maybe 25 yeah. delegates. Yeah. And then the last one, maybe 70? 70, yeah. So every year there's a few more people come and join um, and it feels, and it, I, I've made some remarkable connections both inside Palestine and around the world through PMX. And I think it, there's something about 
a, having a shared experience. So for example, I, was, I went to Hebron as part of my, uh, yeah. one of the day trips. And that place has affected me like nowhere else I've ever been in the world. I, it's very, very difficult. And I think that when you have an experience that's shared that is quite shocking that with others, it's almost like you are naturally then stuck together. You know, you're bonded yeah. after that. And I think because you have to do something with that. So for me, there's something incredibly special about, about PMX. And I guess one of the challenges is obviously there's been the pandemic, so there's been no opportunity. And then can you tell me about like the future of PMX and what's, what the plans are for, for the next, yeah. next one? Well, we, we just, you know, we weren't able to do uh, another PMX since 2019. Then there was the pandemic. And unfortunately, also, we are facing challenges uh, from the authorities, from the Palestinian authorities also to have PMX again. There is a lot of shutdowns happening uh, in the culture sector. Uh, but we are doing you know, what we can to, to have it in 2024. But we're also doing small activities, like we just had a songwriting camp uh, three weeks ago where 11 artists joined together and like recorded 17 songs in three days. So we are, you know, keep pushing it all the time and keep trying uh, to, to, you know, to put that place where artists can express themselves and where we can, you know, in a way, because for us, the music is, is also a tool of, uh, of, of resistance because we are muted. Uh, somehow we are muted by by the world uh, and we are muted also in where we live in in our cities so music in a way is a channel for us hey we are here we are here we are living we are humans we love we we laugh and yes we have this and that and you can you can know about it more and i guess finally for me is just something about the music itself because i think one of the things that maybe surprised me was the diversity in the genres of music that are being made in Palestine. I'm a big electronic music fan, and I remember after one of the evenings at PMX, seeing all the bands, the live bands, Martin Goldschmidt said, come with me, and we're gonna go to a club. And we went to watch Sama Abdulhini yeah. play in this yeah. like really, really cool rave space that could have been in Berlin, right? It yeah. was like, and I walked in and there were, it was, it was like any other rave, rave space in the world. It was amazing. Um, can you tell us a bit about the musical styles that are being made in, in Palestine? Yeah, well, Palestine, we are very diverse uh, people. Uh, we have different kind of genres. For example, in the north, they have different kind of mu traditional music than the south or the center. Um, mostly we have everything from pop to rock to reggae to electronics uh, you can hear that in palestine music expo uh, but it's also very unique what you hear in in palestine you almost don't hear it uh, in any other place uh, we are very also it's important for us to bring our culture and our uh, identity into our music so even if we are having artists who are doing pop music or doing uh, rap music you can still hear where he come from. Um, so it's a very diverse uh, scale of, uh, of uh, genres. Amazing. It's so inspiring what, what you all do. Um, I'm, I'm going to kind of sort of maybe pause there and just see whether we have any questions from the audience. It's very hard for us to see. The lights are so bright up here. So I don't know if, if anybody has any questions. Maybe shout if you do, because I can't actually see yeah. any, any actual humans. No? OK. Um, anytime you have a question, just, just shout. Um, I guess a, panel, a question from me, just to all of you, is why do you think that music has the power to make change, I guess, in your context or just in the world itself? What is it so, what's so special about music? Um, I think music... <coughs> uh, for artists, uh, bring the most important thing in life, and it's community. And when you sh share your music, you are sharing your thoughts and your visions, and that will bring the people that think the same as you 
and you will be a whole community, an artist, or even if they were your audience. And, uh, and I believe that change, if you want to make a change in the world, it's got to be starting from you. And for me, myself, music really changed my life and saved it, if I could say that. And I know that for many artists, it's, it's, the, th it's the same thing. So that's the power of music. It, when, you are, when, you, when you start to change from yourself, you can reflect that change to others as well. And it's so funny that you say music saved your life because I have a podcast called Music Saved My Life. It did. And it features artists from all over the world who, who share that sentiment. So I think it is really powerful. People coming from all sorts of different contexts, yes. you know, where music has for them, within them, has a, enabled them to, exactly. to manifest that change. Um, and I guess, sort of just, just kind of finishing the questions from me, um, what can the music industry do better to support organizations like your organizations or the scene itself? You know, a lot of the music industry is focused around the commercial, I guess it has to be, that's, you know, that's where the money's at. But I don't think that's ever the reason that people get involved in music in the first place. I think people are involved in music because it matters and it means something to them. True. So how can the music industry be more, more conscious and, and more connected? Are there ways that they could support what you're doing or just generally to anybody? I mean, that's one example, you know, bringing uh, us to panels, to showcases, to talk, to bring uh, our artists, our music, our culture to be exposed in, in those festivals, but also to support the other festivals, to support other venues that happening in, in places where, you know, they are not having all uh, the freedom to do whatever they want and they don't have also the budget and the money to do it. Um, you know, being very in solidarity with the, with the music. Uh, I, I also agree with you, and I also think that the uh, the best way to do this is to connect people from the different parts of the world, be, uh, from the different cultures, because what what makes the culture, the music, and uh, generally the relationship between the people, what makes it uh, the most uh, valuable is that this constant uh, getting together and uh, sharing the experiences, sharing the inspirations, sharing the inspirations from different cultures and different parts of the world, because like all in all, we are still part of the uh, one world. <laughs> uh, so yeah, sharing this, all the knowledge and experience and uh, to constantly meet people from uh, different parts of the world. Sazgadabasta <laughs> Our country, Georgia, is uh, just as Palestine is also, Georgia is also occupied by the, uh, by the Russia who has the ongoing war now with, uh, with Ukraine. And uh, the, what uh, the music industry and generally like all, of, all of us can do is uh, to raise uh, the voice against these wars and against the oppressors who are starting the wars and who are occupying the countries. For a question as well, like I agree with all of you as well, Mahmoud, when he said that, and I do believe that we should give the opportunities to everybody equally, to artists equally. Um, when I first arrived to, to Germany, I, a lot of people were inviting me to, to be performing at their events or festivals just because my story, like as a Syrian queer or gay refugee, and I really, after that, started the other show, which called Dandana, and I wanted it to be based just, I want people to come and see me just performing, uh, not based on my story or where I come from or what is my sexual identity is. And uh, yeah, just give opportunities, I think, to openly to, to everybody who deserve it. Amazing. 
one last chance for questions. Anybody? Very quiet. Um, a very quiet crowd. It is. It's, very <laughs> quiet. it's early, isn't it? It's early in the, in the day. Um, we're going to watch a film in a moment, but before we do, I just want to say it's been a huge honor Thank to you. be able to moderate this panel. I'm a very big fan of all of your work, and uh, I think everybody here would agree that you're all doing things that are powerful in the world and that need to happen, and the way in which you're approaching doing them is really innovative and really smart. And um, I just think a huge round of applause for this incredible Thank panel. Um, we're now going to watch a film called Dance or Die, and I'm going to let Georgie just maybe give a few words about it before we, we switch to the film. Well, the Dance or Die is a short experimental movie about the, uh, um, about the culture and, uh, cultural and political important, uh, importance of the dance, which always has been a very crucial part of the Georgian culture and which uh, always ha has been the very crucial, uh, um, the movement which always united the people uh, uh, and the society. And this movie tells the story of the, uh, from the very ancient times until the now, and then uh, about the story about how the dance floors became the, uh, um, the how the dance floors formed the micro uh, sociums and how it became the kind of micro version of the so sociums and how the dance floors uh, made the very, really important cultural and political changes uh, in Georgia. Sounds amazing. I'm going to suggest that we move down there yeah. so that we're not doing this yeah. and watch it. Um, and after the film, I understand that we have maybe a few minutes for questions to the guys um, as well. So enjoy the film. <laughs> 